All right, there's two things that we've done uh, since the last video. One, we now save and load enemy position, allow them to shoot and attack, and also save and load uh, the particle positions. You see that these are particle little shots coming through. And if I pause, they, you can see up here, not only do the particles themselves pause, but the, uh, the particle systems pause, the enemies pause. And then if I save the game and quit, just remember where the position was, reload that they all come at the same at the same uh, spot so now we can uh, pretty much save and load both enemies their positions and any particles that they shoot out um, this doesn't deal with player particles yet but the concept is the same so let's go through that we got classes here so we have our new range attack uh, class this is in our master control prefab Pretty much, it's just like the enemies. It controls, it holds data for all the uh, range attacks that could happen. Um, these are attacks from uh, from uh, uh, enemies specifically. So right now we have our test shot, uh, a link to our projectile, which is just a prefab, uh, damage, some stats that we're not yet using uh, that we might in the future, whether it's fire damage, air damage, etc. Conditions will be a uh, a uh, uh, straight, I'm not sure what this symbol is called, but the straight up and down line uh, delimited uh, list of IDs for conditions, which will be another array that we'll have eventually, like such as poison, stone, um, other conditions that the projectile might uh, attack or, or cause. Um, so if there's only one, it, that will be the one. If there's none, they won't cause any conditions. And then if, uh, let's say there's three, it'll be a randomly chosen between the three. And then this is the chance from 0 to 100% chance that it will cause a condition. Um, so we've got that, and in our enemies uh, list here, we have new things for range distance. This is 15 uh, units out. And, um, and range attacks right here. Range attacks. This is going to be another delimited... Uh, string of potential range attacks. If there's only one, then there's only one attack. And this is the ID of the range right here. So test shot one. Um, so in our enemy script, uh, we have our update here, our update loop. Um, our do action uh, will we'll first check to see if um, we'll set the last player position. Uh, the distance of the player, and if the distance of the player is less than the range distance but greater than the attack distance, then it will do the range attack. So for the range attack, it uh, stops the character from moving, it um, chooses the attack, first splits that array, and then it chooses a random um, one of the attacks, and it sets that to range attack, and then uh, it sets the trigger to range action. Now in that action, we've created just a simple uh, animation for it and in that we have this trigger for attack action um, oh, rather for range action um, under the range attack and so if you go and find range action right here we basically collect the data from the uh, range attack class which is in our master control range attacks range attack and then the ID of the attack um, we if it has a projectile Otherwise, we're going to say that we're missing the projectile. You forgot to drag it in, basically. Uh, if it has a projectile, we instantiate a projectile at the transform. Later, this will be changed to the spawn position, perhaps of a wizard's wand or something. Um, uh, but that's that will be based on the enemy. Um, uh, change the parent to this in-game projectiles transform. You can look that up. It's just a directory inside the scene folder uh, on the hierarchy. Um, look at the player. And uh, and then uh, set the set the let the um, particle know what its ID is, what its enemy ID is, and what the player object is. These two I don't know if we need for now. They're here, but when you respawn the uh, the particle after the game reloads, um, they're currently uh, commented out because I'm not sure if we need them, but I'm leaving them there just in case. So that's all that does. Um, the attack action we have no logic under aside from just saying hey we're doing an attack 
Uh, same with this when it hits we don't do any real logic yet. Um, for the particles itself, simple projectile, has a few scripts. Uh, it's got, this is a, just a move forward script. Uh, one key thing here is that it will pause. If the, if the key pause or menu pauses up, then it will not move forward. Otherwise, it just moves forward at the speed. Um, and then the uh, we have an auto destroy script after 30 seconds. It will just destroy itself. If it's still wandering around, it will destroy itself after 30 seconds. Um, and then our projectile script, it also has a, a section for the pause. It has an array of the particles. Uh, attached. So if you have multiple particles, perhaps one for smoke, one for sparks, one for something else, you can list them all there. And then when you do the pause or unpause, it will go through each of the particles and either pause them or play them. Uh, and then on a collision enter, it's going to look for um, uh, for the enemy blocker, which is the uh, the object on the character. Let me bring that in. Uh, player object. This enemy blocker here. Um, if you turn on the mesh renderer, it's just a sphere around the enemy, the uh, the uh, uh, player that keeps the enemies from going closer. Um, because of the the way the camera set up, we don't want them closer to that. Otherwise, it starts looking funny. They block the whole field of view. Uh, so you can adjust that if you'd like. But the the enemies uh, particles will hit the player when it hits that sphere. Um, it ultimately looks better. To, so you can see the effect of it. And if it does hit the player, it, it marks that it has hit the player um, uh, because right here uh, we want to make sure it only does the collision enter once. So it has hit the player. If there's a death particle, it will create the death particle and then kill it within 10 seconds. Um, that's like an explosion or some other uh, effect that pops up when it gets hit on the player. Um, Turn the sphere collider to enabled equals false and the renderer to false as well. And then uh, for each of the particles, we turn off the initial the uh, emission for for those. So um, the particles will continue. So any like trails etc. will continue to die out on naturally, um, but they will no longer em emit. And the sphere collider and renderer, uh, if you have one or both, disabled. So now people can't see. And it won't collide with anything and then we destroy that in 10 seconds um, that gives the weapon or the particle trails etc time to disappear naturally uh, that's it for the for the particles um, the only other thing we do now is the saving and loading inside our master script save enemies right here um, so we find our scene uh, data object Enemy. And uh, the, uh, for each one of the enemies and game rotation, inside that uh, list, and this is what's called uh, when uh, when we're loading as well. So it saves the current position and rotation um, of the uh, of each enemy. For the projectiles, it's somewhat similar. Um, we don't have a list of projectiles because it's not something that's going to be the same every time. So instead, we have uh, three. Um, Three options here: uh, projectiles, projectiles positions, and projectiles rotation. You can see in mine, there's three projectiles, each of the ID zero. And then each one has its own uh, set of rotations and um, and positions. And that's a, again the straight edge delimited with in between each one. It's it's comma delimited. Um, so what we have to do is they're all strings. So uh, first we find all the tags, game objects that are tagged enemy projectile. Uh, and then if it's um, uh, for each one of those, we basically add uh, the data to a string. And at the very end, we set the game scene, scene ID, projectiles, projectiles position, projectiles rotation to those strings. And that's these strings right over here. Um, then we save the game. So when we're loading the game, and that's in populate the scene. Um, for the projectiles, where are they? Projectiles right here. Um, we basically, if if the projectiles list is not null, if it's not empty, um, then we get a variable for in-game projectiles. Um, all of our projectiles is this uh, is an array of um, the projectiles split from that uh, straight edge. Same with the position rotation. And then for each one of those, for each projectile, 
Uh, we bring up the ranged attack information for that projectile. And again, we have to do parse int for the projectiles because they're all integers. Um, and so we get the range attack from that. Uh, next, we get the array for the position, which is the all particles position, which again, we got uh, split it up from the straight edge, but it's still delimited with commas for X, Y, and Z. So we split it by commas, and uh, then we set it to this, we create a vector 3 for this position, this rotation. We have to use parse float here, since there are floats instead of ints. And then we instantiate the uh, projectile at this position, and then we set the Euler angles to this rotation. We set the parent to the parent transform. This is the exact same, it's just a copy of the, of the script uh, from the enemy script, the instantiate from the enemy script, uh, and we make sure it knows its own attack ID. And in the spawn function here, we have our start rotation, start position. Again, we do the master control, game, scene, scene ID, enemies, this in-game ID, uh, the game position, we split that uh, uh, that string by the commas into an array, and we do the parse float for the vector threes there. So that's pretty much it, and it works, which is great. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, so now we've got enemies that will follow you around, they will um, shoot at you, they will attack you, they will uh, pause and resume, and the projectiles themselves will pause and resume and save. So that's all good. Enjoy.